bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other everyone welcome back to children of verite we're so excited to be here and see you on this lovely tuesday night um let's jump on over to adam for the sponsors all right let's jump in and i'm gonna go ahead uh you know uh, and and share that we have a couple of folks that are a little under the weather or a lot under the weather today yes. so um you know there, there may be lot. some muting and you know, <laughs> coughing into microphones and everything we're doing it live it's going to be a-okay um first of all thank you idol champions of the forgotten realms for your continued support you can grab an electrum chest code on the overlay or bouncing around in chat thanks so much for all of the assistance throughout this entire campaign uh, for children of verite die hard dice who has gifted our cast we've got a new list that we're starting off Ooh. and um you know i keep getting these from folks and i really appreciate that Amazing. but i am still i have to admit like you know there there isn't really a participation award for sending in the list and tall halfling keeps just really bringing it here so i'm just saying like i'm going with tall halfling again here um so uh, everybody can up their game a little bit on the list submissions you know um uh, you know challenge accepted out there um but anyway um so uh, they have gifted our cast with armstrong's amazing adjudicators so it looks like we are going with surnames now. Got, Character yes, surnames now. Ooh, that's a high bar. That yeah, is it a is. Bar. It is. All right. So uh, you can right. use the code Erte to get 10% off, and we are going to give away a $20 uh, promo code for Die Hard Dice. Uh, pay attention to the prompts and chat for that. And finally, tonight, you'll hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape because epic games need epic sound. And then I have one other uh, announcement, a pretty cool thing that, uh, you know, Children of Arte has been nominated in four different categories for the New Jersey Web Fest. So the New Jersey Web Fest, um, and we have been nominated as uh, Best Overlay Design, <laughs> um, best game master. That's so I don't know which direction she is. Um, yeah. We also uh, uh, we also have best player character performance for Lauren Urban. Yay. So way to go, Lauren! Excellent, awesome. And then finally, we are nominated for outstanding actual play. So that's the big actual play award. Okay. So uh, so thanks uh, for the nomination. Mm -hmm. We really truly are honored yes. to be nominated for the New Jersey Web Fest and those actual play categories. Uh, really cool thing that they're doing. And so uh, check all that out. And uh, I'm sure that they will, you know, televise or, or watch the, you know, have some kind of posting of the awards uh, when that comes out pretty soon here. So uh, congratulations on uh, everyone who's nominated there and, um, and uh, looking forward to everything that's happening there. I am Adam Bradford. I am the CDO at Demiplane. And tonight I am playing Silas Sorrell your dimensionally displaced magical super fan. Hang in there, everybody. Hi, I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me on socials at Alicia Marie Body. I'm a costume artist and RPG performer. And uh, like I said last time, uh, con season is officially over for me, but I'm about to face a much, uh, I guess, more ominous bee bag with Halloween season. So if you tune into my socials, you get to see that tonight with these lovely people who are hanging in there. I am playing Fruz Armstrong, attorney at law, who is considering a side career as a DM for V and V. Alicia, I feel like you need to create uh, a additional monsters like, called like Halloween season and con season. <laughs> I can give them Halloween. very special spirit powers. of Halloween, spirit of Halloween. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the dungeon you go through. That is. It can be so, your Aladrin. Uh, you could do an Aladrin. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's four different cool. Aladrins. You have con season, Halloween season, and then whichever other two. Exactly. And it could be like the, the it could be like NPCs that are like. I gained or lost 15 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and you already finished the costume. 
<laughs> oh, no. Your quest is to find a sewing kit on the convention floor. Oh. <laughs> your quest I is to it. fit everything you've made into your luggage. <laughs> right. Suitcase oh. of holding. Yes. Suitcase oh. of holding. It's a puzzle. <laughs> Good idea. A packing puzzle. Oh no. <laughs> Ideas. <laughs> Watch out because this is going to show up next time. We should mm -hmm. be <laughs> beware. The DM is getting ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on socials is at DreamWisp. Um, I try and stream on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Um, you can check out the stream I did with MCDM last week. We did a delightful stream uh, for their new book and it got very chaotic and ridiculous and it was a ton of fun. Um, uh, you can watch Matt Colville's face as I circumvented three floors of, a, of an adventure with an awakened tree. Um, because you can get a ladder and a friend. <laughs> all in one um so you can check that on, out on the mcdm youtube uh if you would like and i believe their kickstarter ended yesterday but you can always check out the the goodies that they are creating which are very cool um but tonight i am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker Maeve morgan flynn who may have her internet stilted one more time by the heat and hopefully next week there will be a solve those are the other monsters, the tech monsters oh, that we right? always need to fight. The it's tech the gremlins. Oh, oh, gosh. It's, it's the worst. It's the worst. Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren <laughs> Urban. I'm the content manager over at Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on the socials as Oba Lauren. The Velvet Lodge has come to an end, but now you can watch the entire thing on the Elder Eye Entertainment YouTube. Uh, I think you should go check it out because it's wonderful and amazing. And I... I try not to cry at the end, but I fail miserably. Uh, but tonight I am playing uh, Neb, who is a uh, Herringon paladin, who is, no, wait. Nope, not anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, thank you. I mean, you I can keep it. acting like it I if you it. want yeah. to. <laughs> I do not have enough armor in order to be an actual <laughs> paladin. I love it. Um, and hello, I am Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on the socials at the Hope Lavelle. Um, you can watch me as a dungeon master on Misfits of Elseta on Wednesdays. Uh, we're back tomorrow with an extremely awesome episode planned. Uh, please tune in. It's going to be so fun. Um, <laughs> it's like the only thing that's kept me going through this sickness is like, oh, I just can't wait to, to kill my players. <laughs> Just kidding, I love them. Hashtag <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but tonight, more importantly, I am playing your granny for hire, Miss Robin Beckett. <clears throat> and uh, and yes, with that, I am Deborah Ann Wool. I am your storyteller for this evening. If you can't tell, Hope and I <laughs> are the ones uh, who are here rallying. We're very excited to be here. Um, <clears throat> And uh, yes, uh, we are about to hop into uh, our 54th chapter of Children of Verite. Fifth, 55th, I'm being told by Joshua. I I skipped a one, 55th chapter of Children of Verite. This is a long tale of epic proportions. Um, fantastic. So thank you all so much for being here. Settle in, grab something warm to drink. God knows we need it. Um, even on these hot days. <clears throat> here in LA, and uh, let's settle in for the 55th chapter of Children of Arte. So last week, uh, we stayed with uh, sort of the the, the four uh, folks, that five, I guess, including Pippum, that decided to stay around the campfire and, and stay warm and play a little game with Silas. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I think that went exceptionally well, and what an excellent way to pass that time as you were waiting for 213 to uh, roll around. However, uh, Robin, our granny for hire, decided to take a little walk, uh, not too far, you know, not out of earshot, um, just to sort of get a little air. Um, so Robin, as you begin to, to walk off and you, you begin to hear the voices of your, your friends around sort of get a little softer, a little bit more in the distance. The crackle of the fire uh, sort of disappears and you're, you're left with just your thoughts 
um, the darkness. It's cold, but you're quite warm, all bundled up. Um, you can hear the crunch of the snow under your boots, a little bit of moonlight coming in as you sort of skirt around the edge of the lake, you know, glistens off of the, the, the ice on the flow. And indeed, out of the corner of your eye, you keep catching this, this fluttering, this, this frantic fluttering and a, a little bit of a hovering bird. But as you turn to look, it just seems to kind of evade your vision. Harold, are you there? You feel a little <laughs> at the back of your neck. Mm, playing games, I see. <laughs> I do love a good game. Uh, and I'll turn. You'll turn. As you turn, hovering right there in front of your face, a small blue hummingbird. Um, very out of season, very out of place for this particular spot. Um, as it just sort of hovers in front of you, darting a little right, little left, up, down, weaving through the air in front of your eyes. Uh, Robin will kind of <laughs> lift up a finger, you know, just, just in case the, the hummingbird wants to perch. <clears throat> it gently floats down landing on your outstretched finger and stops. You barely feel it. It is so small and light, but it stops flapping its wings, settles down, cocks its head a little bit as it looks at you. Well, for a moment there, I thought you were just an illusion, and, but I feel you, which is, you know, neither here nor there. I'd probably be talking to you either way, but... If it is you, Harold, I... I need to tell you a secret. Something I haven't told the others. Hopefully they don't find out. <clears throat> I... am terrified. I'm really scared. I... Uh... <laughs> I think that last fight back there really, really was a wake-up call each time I woke up. And she's like fidgeting with her ear, which doesn't mm. quite sit right, and there's a hearing aid inside of it now, <laughs> and she kind of turns it. I know all of my adventures have had consequences. This feels <coughs> different, very different. I, I'm not worried about myself in the sense that I'm more worried about if something happens to me, who will be here to protect the others? Harold. The hummingbird takes flight, comes by that ear with the hearing aid and as it gets closer and that fluttering gets louder and it almost sort of nuzzles its little feathery face against the side of yours and it begins to go behind your head and fall down and land on your bag oh yes that's new too harold uh, I don't know why it's changing, but I suppose all of these changes are... Are you trying to tell me something? It nods, bobbing its head a little bit. All right, I'll bite and I'll open the bag, I guess. <clears throat> Do you stick your hand in? Yeah. You reach in and you feel a small packet of letters, something you'd forgotten. Pull them out. Wrapped in a little red string is a packet of letters that you had pulled out of Julian's chest way back in town when you all had dug out that chest from underneath the ground by the river um, and received a shard. And you had grabbed them and put them away. And now 
You hold them in your hand. <laughs> That's fitting, I suppose. And uh, Robin will find a rock or something to sit at, and she's going to look through them. The little hummingbird will settle down on your knee and look at you, watching you as you begin to look through them. It's a beautiful, dainty little red ribbon, clearly vintage, as you, you pull at one side and the bow just sort of opens up. Um, you see that there are five letters and envelopes in this packet. Each of the envelopes is from Julian, addressed to Ivy, and each of them comes from a far off land, uh, a, a country far, far from home. They are opened. <clears throat> um, and these, you said these are from Julian? They're from Julian to, to Ivy, but the the postmarks are from countries far away. Well, it seems that Julian has had quite the adventures as well. Maybe we have more in common than I thought. And I'll pick one and just read it. Um, which one would you like to pick? It Just randomly? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, the first one is from China, postmarked from China. As you pull out a single sheaf of paper from inside and open it up, you are surprised to see a grocery list. <laughs> In English, um, milk, eggs, butter, flour, vegetables. Very mundane. Huh. Well, all right. I'll just look for another one. Okay, you open the, the second letter in the packet. This one's from the United Kingdom. <clears throat> you take this out. This is two sheets of paper, and uh, it's a recipe for brownies. Looks particularly delicious. Real chocolate. <clears throat> well, this is very interesting, Harold. <laughs> it's either feels like a mystery or, or perhaps a puzzle of some sort. Maybe they communicated in secret code. <laughs> this must mean something. Can't just be a grocery list. Ooh, this is getting interesting. I'll pull <laughs> another one. The third one you open uh, is postmarked from Peru. Um, and it is a list of Christmas gifts. No names attached, but just, you know, says Christmas gift list and it has a bunch of different things. Scarf, book, you know. Do these papers feel like they fit into these, like, they they, they went with... Oh, yeah, perfectly. <clears throat> They're all creased, you know, folded up so they fit just right. You know, Harold, if... This were me riding home to you on one of my many adventures. I kind of feel like if I could see myself doing something like this as a way of making it feel like I was home with you. You know, oh, Harold, you need to go to the grocery store. Here's the grocery list. <laughs> or perhaps, oh, here's what we should get the shelter for Christmas. The little bird flies excitedly, <laughs> lands back down on you. This to me looks like true love. Not all those flowery words. And I'll open another. The fourth one is postmarked from Australia. And as you open the letter inside this one, it's a single sheet of paper. It's larger than the rest. It's been folded up to fit. But as you open it, your heart skips a beat. There's an abstract spiral doodle that's been done on this page that you instantly recognize. This was the kind of doodling that Harold did when his mind was on something else. The little bird settles on your knee, quiet, looking straight at you. Uh, Harold, what are you trying to tell me? He walks over the little bird, standing on the piece of paper, 
and wherever his little footprints walk, words begin to appear. As the spiral doodle disappears beneath him and below, comes to the surface, my busy hummingbird. I don't know if you will ever receive this, but if you do, then you must be on your way. I am waiting anxiously, but the choice is always yours. Turn back if you must, but if I know my girl, there's little chance of that, and I will see you again. The letters disappear. The little hummingbird rises up to your face, nuzzles you one more time, and flies off into the darkness. I'll never turn back. And she'll get up, and she'll take one last look, She'll kind of hold on to the letters and she'll, uh, I'm coming. So you hold on and suddenly look at your watch, phone, whatever is still <laughs> keeping time for you. A surprising amount of time has swept by, two hours practically. Um, just in the enormity of the moment, the suspense of the moment has just taken your breath away, your sense of time. Um, you can feel and hear some shouts, hooray! <gasps> Gasps of excitement coming from back where your friends are camped. Um, <clears throat> as you embrace this quiet And grateful for the moment, uh, Robin will make her way back feeling a little bit more rejuvenated than before. As you make your way back towards the clearing, <clears throat> you can see that your friends are all excitedly, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> excitedly sitting around the campfire, <clears throat> uh, cheering um, as Silas brings, sees you and brings this particular episode of Vaults and Vagabonds uh, <laughs> to a close. Uh, everyone seems to have had a tremendous time. Um, you can see that, you know, uh, there's a, a clear disc that has been created on top of the, um, on top of the fire uh, so that they can actually roll dice as if it's sort of <laughs> clattering above the, the, the firelight itself. Um, <clears throat> as everyone has their own special colored dice and pieces of paper that Silas has handed out and they begin to stuff them into their bags as you return. Oh, what did I miss here? Oh, it's so great. You're going to have to play next time, Miss Robin, right? And Silas <laughs> looks at everybody like and locks eyes with every single person, <laughs> oh, just absolutely. anxiously hoping that they had a good time. I mean, not only do you have to play, but you have to join us on this adventure so that we can finish it out. Silas, I I respect the cliffhanger. You did an amazing job, but cliffhanger, really? Yeah, right when we were expecting dragons? It, it's, it's what happens every time. Like, you know, uh, the, the time limit for however long you have to play plays itself out. You get right up to the edge of it, and then you have to just leave them wanting more. Like that, yeah. That, that's how it works. Pivum looks up Absolutely. at you and goes, "Dirty, dirty trick, terrible, terrible." It is. I do not approve. I mean, I was I having agree. fun being normal. When, when, when I've watched people play this game, uh, <coughs> like there are some, you know, streams that I I used to watch all the time, like, um, and uh, and when they did that, it really, really peeved me off. But um, but you know, but it got it, you excited for the next week, didn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the idea anyway. Like after you get over the anger and resentment. Ah, fair enough. Well, I've played plenty of board games back in my this day. This isn't a board game. <laughs> hold, hold on, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not a board game. It's, uh, I mean, you can maybe start to understand it by thinking of a board game. But it is a tabletop role-playing game. And um, it is its own different genre. It's a subsection of the tabletop hobby. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, um, the reason I say this is cause I actually can't stand board games. Like I, I don't play board games at all. I only like this kind of game. And so, uh, it's, it's definitely very different. 
Well, I see. But have you played advanced vaults and vagabonds? Uh, oh. I, I mean, actually, I have. I mean, I wasn't <laughs> alive when it was made, which I guess you were. Are you acting like you were familiar with it? I was indeed. <laughs> Miss Robin, did oh. you work on it? Did, did you like write something for it? Because I could see you. Oh, you know, on like I that. I wouldn't say I play tested a couple of mechanics. <laughs> what? Things, but... I, why, why are we even surprised though, Miss Robin? <laughs> did you write for Vault's magazine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Piffa, meanwhile, kind of comes up and tugs at your pant leg, uh, uh, Silas, and says, "Well, I imagine if the if the games are boring, if they're." board games then, <laughs> then of course you wouldn't enjoy it exactly them. why would crash, someone create a board crash game? you understand me you understand <laughs> me you get me board games makes no sense he grumbles and steps off back to his space Silas, putting, putting his very dice intentionally in his never correct <laughs> <laughs> well miss robin you came back at the perfect time because uh i, I think we're, we're we're getting close to the time aren't we yes yeah, so you've got about 15, 20 minutes, maybe, I'd offer, uh, until 2.13. Oh, I What's just forgot that. Oh. I mean, maybe we should have just kept playing. And, hey, Ivy, would you like to join us for the next 60 <laughs> seconds? Like, oh, my um, God. <laughs> that's enough for one person to get through one-eighth of their turn. <laughs> we could give her some of these dice, and she could... If we give her something, then she gets sucked back into the mirror. Does she keep it? The rules of magic, I, I don't know. I mean, I've got something I want to give her after her little performance last night. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, we should talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we only have a minute. Let's assume that she's not going to bolt again. Um, yeah. We could spend that minute being angry. Or we could spend that minute trying to be productive. Or you can I, be both. Like, it's fine to be both. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about like the, be very productive. It it can so angry I'm words, but nice. words that are productive towards a, a goal, which is what. I don't even know at this point. I mean, <laughs> like we need to get this last shard and then just hold it over their heads we do. and be like, "Look, we will let you out if you acquiesce to all of our demands," which are which we need to come up with the main. We need but... to make a list. We need to make more lists. We need to oh, God, please so no. We have... we... That's for some board games. <laughs> Our lists. <laughs> the last time... I mean, I think... Do we care more about what Ivy has to say or do we care about our, our bull friend this time? I don't believe well, anything we that were, Ivy has to say at yeah, this point. We were focusing on the bull friend. I mean, I don't believe the bull. Let's be clear. I don't know if I believe anybody that comes out of magical mirrors at this stage. <laughs> <That's> my... <laughs> and the only thing he wanted to talk about was finding Ivy, despite the fact that, you know, he was off the train. But I'm well, not opposed to trying again when he appears. So, since we saw Ivy... We found out that we have some air creature that we're dealing with, correct? So that's something yeah. that's new. We've met our creepy lake lady at the lake. lake. Uh, didn't seem to provide us with a sword. Uh, now she provided us with something else, which was... Uh, oh, ow. Let's not get that again. <laughs> But, but, I, I'm glad that you brought up air because isn't the ruler of air the one that we don't know the name of? Correct. Maybe Ivy knows? His name is Michael Jordan. <laughs> On our world side. I, th I think very you good. Ivy I just got about, that. Oh, oh huh. missed opportunity. <laughs> I mean, I hope you're right. If it's Michael Jordan, then we're going to have a lot better of a time talking with him, especially Silas, you. I, like, we'll just push oh, you yeah. forward and you'll... You'll know everything. It won't be creepy at all for MJ. Like, but but no, obviously this world does not know his airness. Um, it's some kind of other airness. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just kind of throwing out there that, you know, air makes tornadoes and tornadoes have like, you know, completely destroyed entire, you know, huge swaths of this forest. And so we might be closer to the air 
I don't know. Are these gods? Are we calling these gods? We call them rulers? Is that what rulers. we call them? Yeah. Okay, and rulers. as I said before, for all we know that Talrin was going after the air ruler. Talrin didn't specify which her. Do we know the air ruler's a her? No. We don't know anything about that. But we do know that the swamp, late lady of swamps, Zola. lady of what? Yeah. So that is a lady though, right? Mm-hmm. And so could have been yeah, meaning her yeah, also. Queen, queen I think it's a good point. Yeah. I'm really good at Pivim today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right in the wheelhouse. Right in the wheelhouse for Pivim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Queen Zola. Yeah, so Queen Zola. So Hey, what what if though? Speaking of anger, um, you know, uh, it's cousin hate. Um, like hate is a pretty powerful motivator. And so, what if like I'm I'm just saying, I would love to understand more about Julian. So, what if you know we try to harness what has got to be some hate that Talron has for Julian, and like see if we mention Julian in some way or something. See if Talrin gives us some kind of clue in that 60 seconds as to Julian's whereabouts or his fate or anything that he might know about it. Why can't we do both? It seems like we get that's Ivy. That's fine. Yes. Well, we get Ivy for 59 seconds or so, and then that's when Talrin appears. So, I mean, maybe, maybe we get 50 seconds with Ivy and then tell her to run on purpose. And then mm -hmm. when Tolerant comes out, we try to have How, a Have we asked I I Ivy what happened to Julian or where Julian is located now? Yes. Yeah. And what That's did she perfect. say? What she remembers is that she remembers that uh, Tolerant was coming. Julian protected her. And there was something that happened. And then Julian was gone and everything was gone. So essentially the, her, her memory is that he... He basically cast something that put her in the mirror, mm -hmm. presumably to save her. But that's her last yeah, so memory she, of Julian. In other she words, she no doesn't idea actually what know. Yeah, no it. idea what her her claiming is that she has no idea what became of him right. after that moment. Hmm. Okay, so we ask Ivy about the ruler of air, and we ask Talrin about Julian. I think we asked Ivy about the ruler of air, haven't we? Mm -hmm. It seems like it was on one of the lists. There were a lot of lists. <laughs> we do have a lot of lists. I pull out the my notebook and I start frantically going through it. Oh, I don't know how much I was able to, to write down, but I'll see what I can find. I mean, is it is it worth asking again? I feel like we, we got just the, the basics. I don't remember ever asking outright about the the ruler of air. I mean, maybe we can no, we ask questions ask like, that before. like, do you know where the ruler of air is here in the veil? Because we did get confirmation that the ruler of air was in, in the veil, right? No. No, we don't know anything. Why did we, did we just guess that? No, we think. We just guessed it. Yeah, because the other three are, so. Do we know Zola is here? Pippin, Pippin goes, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because Lorelia's not doing so hot. Yeah, I see. So, yeah, so probably safe assumption, ruler of air is here then. So I understand how we arrived there. Um, so if, if that's the case, then um, maybe Ivy, like, let me ask this. If we find the ruler of air, do we expect, I don't know, any, what, what do we expect? What do we expect to get out of that encounter? Well, I feel like Zola and the Ruler of Air are going to have at least their own version of the story, right? Okay. If if we're at all, whether we believe Ivy and Talrin or not, they don't have the whole story. And so even if they can provide just a little, also if they're here and putting the mirror back together is going to have some of the consequences that all of you were talking about, about maybe it brings trying scribing magic maybe it does other things i suspect that they're gonna want to know so i i think if we can talk with them we can hopefully find out some information maybe even an ally i mean pivum if, if we ran into zola do you think she's someone we could talk to oh boy i mean uh, she wouldn't know me i'm just you know 
one of the many, but uh, but uh, yeah, if you know, I was you know one of her people for sure, and I can I could certainly try to do a parlay on uh, on account of the the group here. Um, but I don't know. I mean, she's supposedly a pretty fearsome lady. Crash, I don't know why, but tonight especially, oh, yeah. you, you sound like Lizzie <laughs> Kaplan, like doing a Pivum voice, and it is delicious. <laughs> like, it is wonderful. Fascinating, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you about her at some point. So. <laughs> With all that practicing being a regular human, after all the, yeah, you know, working yeah. on the, those voices, then it kind of leaves you a little. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've yeah. done great, yes. Thanks. Um, okay. Yeah. So well, we're we ask assuming... about air and earth. Yes. I mean, I think we're, I mean, we're assuming that Tauron even wants to talk to us. Yeah, Tauron's not going to want to talk. Like, hey, you know, like, are we feeling like a little itchy? Like, do we think we can like try to throw down if we do coordinated with Tauron well, here? That's actually a really good question. Is everybody feeling good <clears throat> after? Uh, I mean, I'm saying not fighting is not the first <laughs> option. I'm saying like, do we stand our ground? <laughs> when Talron is there, or do we run away very scared like we have any, every other time? Like, well, it's fine if we do that. I'm just asking, at what point do we think that we're ready to stand our ground? When we're not dying, I, or we're I, not seriously well, no, like, hurt. Of course, that's the goal. We don't want to die. I, I think tonight is probably the wrong night to get into a fight, but I, I think we could at least try to stand our ground and talk if if last night was any indication, there is a chance of talking with him. He did talk with us, even if he was stubborn about the, the subject matter. So, and we now know that they are going to get sucked back into the mirror, no matter what. So that that's at least a well, little. Well, did we, we were wondering if there was a way that if something happened or the mirror moved, if that would change what happened to them. Is tonight the night we try that? What if we put the mirror in water? Like, or, you or know, across in water. fire. Oh. Well, Talron will probably like that, but. Yeah. I think we're afraid to destroy. Well, I don't know if the mirror can be destroyed. We really don't know. I don't I think, think we're, we're trying to destroy to the mirror. It's just to see if they are going to be pulled back into it no matter where we put it. And if that could change where they go. I, I'm all for putting it in water, burying it in the ground, that kind of thing, but we can't use that lake because that lake is already filled with people <laughs> that don't want oh, to talk with yeah. again. So we have yeah. to, yeah. I mean, like for science though, what if we put the mirror like behind a big tree or something and they get sucked back in? Are they just going to destroy the tree in front of it? I wonder. Are they going to teleport through the tree? <laughs> well, I'm just very um, curious. Last night when... I seem to remember that we'd prop the mirror up against a tree because we'd all moved back away from it. Mm -hmm. Did uh, did either Ivy or Talrin leave any sign that they had been there, you know, hoof prints, fire. So burning. no, as you remember from previous experiences with them, any sort of mark that they leave on the outside world, once those sort of two minutes are up, it disappears, goes back to as it was. Now, what you experienced was seeing Ivy's face in the mirror, her standing then in front of it as she then ran past you. The smoke in Talron definitely came from behind the mirror, but it, it sort of emanated out. And when it got pulled back in, it just got sucked in around the back. Space not sort of seeming to have much effect on... <clears throat> I mean, it so, was up against a wall previously. Mm -hmm. What I'm wondering if... if well, I guess if it was up against a wall, that would kind of negate the idea that if you knocked it flat, that might it might change. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we're dealing with magic, and they're just going to end up back in there until we find the last shard. And so I think that we need to, like, you know, obviously live through this uh, 120 seconds or however long it is, mm -hmm. um, and then we need to get on finding the shard, and then we need to really be thinking 
about what we're going to do with that last shard because you know something tells me that just coming in and letting it you know like magnetic like whoop, like suck in there and like you know make the mirror whole is probably not our best move and you have still not inserted the shard that um you got <coughs> excuse me most recently right oh i thought we had i thought we, we, had. I thought we had. I thought had you okay yeah then my then great so you've put everything in that you have found okay um uh, we did discover that Miss Robin cannot just understand them, but speak to Talgren, correct? Yes, Robin so, can understand. Robin just understands the language somehow that this crazy bull beast is speaking. And can speak it back. Yes. As well. I'm sure you've had a lot of experience over your lifetime with bullheaded men. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Robin, have you I, ever been a negotiator in your life? <laughs> you should have been. That would be good. Well, I think everyone has their limit. Um, I mean, well, just from my well, experience what? in a courtroom, you can get anyone to talk. So, Talron has a limit that we can somehow get him to. Swear to me. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm just saying is that most of us can't understand, much less speak to Talron. But. Miss Robin can, so she's mm. going to have to be our voice here. So get up in the tree, Miss Robin. We will make sure <laughs> that he comes out there. You grab him by his legs and hang him upside down. <laughs> what is this? What does he sound like when he like? What does he sound like, Miss Robin? Like, like he... your worst nightmare. Huh. It does sound like you know. Metallica played backwards or something. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, I was gonna uh, say, the... like, you know, six hours of a board game, but um... <laughs> <laughs> well, last night, both of them were both of them were faced with being in a different environment when they got out of the mirror and Ivy ran and Tolran maybe Talrin thought that she had actually escaped and was running after her. Now that we're all aware of what's going on and they're not going to be as surprised tonight, maybe tonight is we get a chance to talk with either or both of them a little bit more. It's mm. I think it's worth a try. I agree. Let's just wait to talk to them. Let's yeah. improvise. Hey, we just spent like two hours improvising <laughs> when we were playing V and V. I mean, I think that it's something that everybody is like pretty proficient in at this point. Uh, yeah. May I grab uh, Miss Robin for a second and just I, I just I I found this after the uh, the scary lady. I just when I was looking at her, uh, just this. Uh, I was wondering if you knew anything about it. She pulls it up. It's it's a right. it's a sort of heart shaped red jewel gem. Um, with a simple sort of gold surrounding and a, a, a simple sort of chain. Um, it's got a little bit of uh, ashy remains stuck in it. <coughs> oh. Oh, right. Well, I have dabbled in beading hobbies, you know, in my time. <laughs> let me let me take some time to look at this. And, uh, Robin will sit down for about 10 minutes and just kind of... Oh, just enough time, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go ahead maybe, and do maybe that. Maybe it can help us for what we're doing, or it can be something we throw far, far away or give us a gift to... All right. Um, so, uh, with this item... <clears throat> Uh, we'll say 10 minutes goes by, you all are going to improvise, so it sounds like you're just, if there's anything you want to do to ready your environment <laughs> before this happens, like where do you want to place the mirror, how do you want to ready the environment, as soon as you're set, we'll say that Robin is done with her uh, perception of this item, uh, and we'll give that information, and you'll have about 30 seconds before this all goes down. The forest that we're in is are the trees really close together? Is it like a thick wood? Or... Is it like Battle of Indoor speeder bike density, or is it looser <laughs> or tighter than that? Okay. <coughs> um speeder bike density. Okay. Um 
but you can find clearings like this little space that you were, you know, playing your V and V game in is a little bit, <laughs> a little bit more open. Right. Um, but it's, it's a fairly dense part of the wood here. Can I suggest that we set up the mirror in a spot in where we're all going to have the option of cover of a tree in case Talrin decides that instead of talking with his mouth, he'd like to talk with his horns. Because I don't know about any of you, but I can't outrun him. I don't think any of us can outrun him. So maybe maybe having something to duck behind is a better option. I, I'm with you there. What do we think would happen? I'm just really curious at this point. If, you know, say somebody were to fly up into the air and then <laughs> telekinetically suspend the mirror very high in the air when 215 Wait. came, what do we think would happen at that point? I'd so like to find it. out. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you want to kite him. I, I'm just saying, like, you know, I can go high, still where everybody can see us, and then, you know, I can hold it 60-ish feet away from me and suspend it in the air. Like, do we think they will jump out? Will they land on the ground and be okay? Like, I don't know what would happen. I don't know either, but can you do that after Ivy gets out? Because yes. we can, Ivy comes out, we can try to talk to her. And then while we're trying to talk to her, you make the mirror go real high and, and make Tolrin have to stop and think for a moment when he comes out. <laughs> See, see what happens. I, I, I mean, absolutely. I am very on board with that. Cool. And we'll be ready in case he really doesn't like your little idea. I mean, something tells me he's not going to like it. But you know, I mean, he may sprout wings it. and like fly after me, but that's okay. I will give him a merry chase. <laughs> All right. Or come down and then duck behind a tree. One of the two. But yeah, I'd, I'm not gonna lie. I'd like to see that happen. But after Ivy comes out, because okay. I, I think... I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of all for suspending her in the air, too. But that's fine. <laughs> yeah, if we still think that we like, like Ivy, that's... that's okay. I don't know why you guys power. trust Ivy more than time. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. I, I don't. I don't. She's the worst now. It, I think it's less about trust at this point and more about she's at least given us information. She's at least <laughs> she's told us... <laughs> We've at least been able to talk with her. She has given us information and seems to want to give us more. So I feel Listen, like- Listen, from the first time I saw her, I knew that something was off. Like she gave me the biggest <laughs> fright of my entire life, staring at me all horror movie like out of that window in that train. And so I just knew she was trouble. Silas, give me a quick investigation check, please. Do you want me to do it? <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, it's plus three <coughs> anything four, else actually four plus four okay uh sorry uh uh nap was there something you want to say i was just thinking maybe that's where all those horror movie tropes come from maybe ivy is the <laughs> or she's the originator she's the yeah. scribe brought it from ivy mm -hmm. um something that's really starting to creep you out is that ivy's supposed to be like a ruler of like water and yeah. snow and all these things and she seems super weak it's really, it's like, as you're starting to think about it, you're like, this is, we like, why is, why is this ruler so ineffectual? Yeah, and so as, as Silas is recognizing this, yeah. he's going to say, hey, Pivum, real quick, mm -hmm. question for you. All you right, I know. What do you need? Yeah, I know that you talk about like, oh, you know, I'm just little Pivum. I'm just yeah, one yeah, of yeah. the people of my world. That humility is great. You need to keep that on. That's that's wonderful. <laughs> Everybody likes that. But, oh, cool. um, but one of the things that I was curious about is with Zola. Did I mm -hmm. say her name right? Zola. Did, yeah. Queen, Queen Zola. Zola. So is Queen Zola like powerful? And I don't mean in like a political machination way. I'm talking, does Queen <laughs> Zola have like you know, real power, like magical oh, yeah. power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Queen Zola, she can move mountains. She can... Uh, have you seen this or have you just heard this secondhand? Oh, well, I've heard the stories, yeah. Okay, but you haven't seen Queen Zola ever before yourself. Maybe only once, I think, from far, far away, yeah. Did she do anything fantastical when you saw her from far away? Well, I thought she was a mountain and then she moved. Oh, okay. So she just looks oh like God. a mountain and can move. All right, well, that's no, pretty she special. looked like a mountain, and then she didn't look like a mountain. Or she looked like a moving mountain. Or... 
Oh uh, okay. Yeah. So I think that qualifies. So what what I am wondering here, everyone, <coughs> is that every time we've seen Ivy out of this mirror anyway, it's been a little bit weak sauce. Like, all I'm saying is that if we believe that all these folks are rulers, right? Like mm -hmm. rulers of these different places. Talran obviously is powerful. Like we've seen this, even being theoretically trapped in the mirror or whatever we think is going on with this mirror. Talran comes out and like kills Steve. Okay. So powerful. Okay. Sorry. That was too soon. I didn't mean to be that insensitive, but I was just trying to get that out there. Um, but you know, Talran like threw down, you know, like very, very powerful. Um, apparently Queen Zola is, uh, you know, a mountain that can move. And then if this is the air Lord ruler person, then they're, you know, uh, destroying the entire forest, you know, all those things. Have we seen Ivy actually do anything? Like, has she done so much as make it rain or anything? Well, but didn't she become human or something? I don't that know. Maybe so. It yeah. It all up. Yeah. That, that's what I was thinking. Silas, I think you make a really good point, but before, if we're to believe the stories, before she got trapped in the mirror, she and uh, Julian had been on Erte for quite a while. And the the idea is that the when they're away from the land that they're ruling, they become mortal. They give up their immortality. So maybe that's also giving up your power. And if she, if that amount of time was enough that she's <laughs> this weak, I mean, yeah, Talrun is powerful, but in a very specific way, you know, we haven't seen him do anything except be a really menacing bull. I mean, guess what? I can be a really menacing bull well, too. Well, no, Talron is definitely Ooh. like, you know, on fire. Like, I, I, I'm just saying like there, there's something magical about the physiology or something of Talron is, is all I'm saying. And I haven't yeah. observed that uh, mm -hmm. with Ivy other than her doing like the creepy, like, you know, jerky horror movements, um, mm -hmm. you know, occasionally and stuff. And so I don't think that that's like a super um, but, um, you know, if Ivy is just human or mortal or whatever at this point, then, uh, you know, what, I mean, what even happens if she gets loose? Can she turn herself back into a ruler? Cause we're hearing that rulers have to exist for all these worlds to be okay. Right. Well, she'd have to go back to the, the water place that she's from, assumably. Yeah. But what if it's a one way door? It's like, you know, Charlie, you can never come back, you know, kind of thing. Maybe she became mortal <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, that's anyway, it. that's fine. Like we can, we can keep, keep going with this. I'm just saying. Or that, she's like, trying I, to go find. Find who? I don't know. Are there any, are there any stories in the fairy tale book that seemed to resonate with that idea? Um, <clears throat> Sorry to put you on this. No, give me an investigation check. Okay. Um, yeah. Can I help with that? Since sure. the book that we have, we already know that my great grandfather was kind of connected. Absolutely. To. Uh, let's see, like, a, what's your history bonus? uh plus six plus six all right let's go ahead and add that let's do it okay. that's a that's a strong offer 24 24 okay <clears throat> i'm gonna offer that there even let's say a story like the little mermaid right mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the original version there is entering another world of someone else, there is a sacrifice that must be made. Um, that it's not necessarily more powerful or less powerful. They are just different powers. We view one as magical because it is not of us, um, but you cannot have both, right? She cannot live both underwater and on the land. She has to choose and she will sacrifice in either way. Um, and so you, as you read through that, you find some resonance that potentially a story like Ivy's has to do with giving up one kind of power for another. <clears throat> mm 
Well, and assumably she gave up immortality to be with Julian on Earth. And then eventually... really special. Well... We should try to find him. <laughs> I, I think that's an excellent idea. I, unfortunately, I don't know where to start. Um, but then they decided they needed to come back and Tolren was always waiting for them. So I wonder... But can you, if you go back, can you reclaim the old power? Well, possibly, because it may just be, you know, it may just be finding the, ah, uh, you know, the little thing <laughs> that Ursula was hiding away. Like, what? it could be like a thing that is containing the power, like a soul jar or, oh. you know, something like, like you know, it's like uh, sucking her beautiful voice into, I don't know, was it like a conch shell or something? It I was, it was a necklace that Ursula wore. There you go. So, uh, you know, we may be after like a necklace on Ursula's neck, and then we got to get that off, and then we can give Ivy back her. Oh. I, I don't know about the timing of this. Speaking but I think of Neb necklaces. immediately looks over at where Robin right, is we look laying at around like, Robin. with that necklace. Like, as the <laughs> clock ticks towards 12 13, <clears throat> uh, around 2 10, Robin, you get a really clear image, feeling a gut feeling of what this item is and as all of your friends expectant faces turn towards you thinking you've got uh, a real live you know disney prop in your hand um <clears throat> your blood runs a little bit cold so this amulet allows an attuned wearer to survive without food drink or air forever but it is terribly cursed the attuned wearer will instantly become obsessed with treasure, spending every waking moment searching for things shiny or valuable or reflective or magical. The amulet will also give them a second sense to find these items. It's treasure find? It's like literal video game stats treasure find <laughs> stuff? Where did we find this thing again? I can't remember. It what was... The inside the scary lady oh so she like is potentially inside her? like inside her like was, inside her incorporeal uh, body or whatever because right? there wasn't much left of it it probably oh, yeah, fell true. through her rib cage decades ago yeah. Okay. Hmm. So she is potentially, as you are, as you are looking at this Robin and getting a sense of it, you were like, she is potentially a an example of what happens to someone. <laughs> My precious. <laughs> Talk about yeah. giving up something in order to get something. Uh, it's a uh, man, but think about it. Wouldn't have to eat or drink. Live. Would you say live forever? Which Basically, there's. Uh, I mean, you could be murdered, right. obviously, but yeah. but there is no, you know, there is something no, that powerful doesn't protect against murder. I mean, does come not on, not protect against murder. Yeah. Um, also, so, if what you're giving up is part of your life in order to spend your life looking for more stuff, what kind of life are you leading? Yeah, what kind of existence Ooh. is that? Yeah. Right, but think about all the adventure it is to be a treasure hunter. As she holds it in her hand and just feels it sort of warm to her touch. Think you could live forever. <laughs> hey, Miss Robin, Miss Robin, can I see that uh, necklace? Uh, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Bilbo Baggins, <laughs> I'm trying to help you, not rob you. I mean, if if you end up looking like the scary lady and acting like the scary lady, is that worth it? I, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to hold on to it. That's all. Uh oh. I mean, I trust you. I'm not saying that we need to, like. It's not a matter of trust, it. it's a matter of you mm -hmm. can't control it. Well, we don't know that part. She didn't say that part. She just said it was cursed. I mean, she did and... say it. You become obsessed with finding treasure at the expense of all else. But, but that could be useful in some At the ways. expense of all else. Do you know what well, it's like to have a true obsession? Yes. Well, we that. Yeah. I've, you know what? I, I have. I found one. Have out you ever been hyper focused? It's not fun. 
and yeah, and I'm hyper focused on on the stars and the moon and the fact that this is not a conversation that we can have right now. Time begins Luckily, to pick. We don't have time for anyone to attune to it right now, so let's put it away. <laughs> far, far away. And we'll deal with it later. The mirror has been placed against a tree. I'm going to find a tree that is 15, 20 feet in front of it to stand next to that I could potentially duck behind if necessary. You got it. I'm going to fly directly up about uh, six. I'm still within 60 feet of the mirror, though. And I want to be certain that I am in as much of a uh, clearing as I can. Like, so, you know, equidistance between the trees. Yes. And uh, I am readying an action for after, whenever uh, Ivy's time is over and I see smoke start to come out, I am flying, uh, I'm grabbing it and flying upward with it. Okay. Yeah, you're up there. You can see the lake. You can see the trees going on endlessly. (coughs) Sorry, Maeve. Oh, I, I, w- I want to hide as well and okay. uh, ready uh, an attack as well. With, All right. with You're my, uh, hiding straight out. So go ahead, roll a stealth roll for me. Um, so I, I'm going to try to talk to Ivy. Uh, Robin, Feruza, do this you want to try to talk to 26. Talron, depending on what happens? I'll talk to Talron. I'm not afraid. I'll stand I'm, with I'll stand with you with the two. She's sort of has all kinds of shinies. Robin <laughs> swinging the the, if the she's, amulet. If she's swinging the amulet, yeah. we need to, to get that away from her before because <laughs> she's only ten minutes. She's only like half attuned to it. You know, just halfway. <laughs> uh, can, can we please get that away from her, please? Are you saying this out loud? Yes, because no. it's not a, it's not a good thing to have around. Silas is not going to attempt to take it away from Miss Robin because uh, he thinks that that's impolite. Robin will put it away in her backpack. Okay. She'll just deep. Yeah, it should it be out of sight from the two of them. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, Fair. it's in there. But, but Robbie, you can just feel that it's there. It's just <laughs> nice to know. Just nice to know that it's there. That it's on your person. It's safe <laughs> oh, with no. you. It just really, oh, that just feels good. Ruza, anything you'd like to do before before this starts? You've got <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> I think she's going to position herself, uh, I guess, in between or next to Neb and Robin. Okay. And she's just going to clench her fist. And when she does, she's giving herself stone's endurance to heal a little bit from the. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. yeah I probably Wait, you didn't get a chance that. to heal up while we were playing the game? Did we? Was yes, you rest, had or? some short rest. Yes, I allowed okay. short rest to some happen. Dice. Oh, perfect. I'm, I'm just going to do that out RPG, of the side. RPG gameplay is compatible with short resting. <laughs> I'm just going to very quickly do that it now. charges your batteries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Getting ready, stealing my time. Okay, Go so ahead, little pause to okay. heal up a little with some hit dice. Everyone's good? Okay. Uh, the mirror, as you look in it, you can see a little bit of a shadow waft across it and suddenly standing there in front of you in her pale blue dress, her tight blonde curls, her blood red lips, is Ivy. She stands, looks around, taking in her surroundings, <sighs> takes a deep breath. As you first notice that no um, mist, no you know, hot breath is made when she breathes. You're all looking out and you can see this, this vapor emitting from your own mouths as you breathe, but with her, it's almost as if her breath is cold as she stands there looking around and she, her eyes land on Neb, Veruza, and Robin. No writing this time, all right? We don't have a lot of time and it didn't work. So He's coming. He's I know. Coming. Yep, absolutely. And we're going to try to deal with him too. So uh, train's gone, but still have the mirror, still working on stuff. We're trying to still figure things out. Do you know who the ruler of air is? Because we think we're going to run into her. What? Them. Why Why are we spending our time with this? Because we must we, go. We, what, we, should, what should we be spending time on? You can't go anywhere. You yell. She looks yeah. straight up and sees you floating <laughs> 60 feet above. <coughs> she says, but he will hurt me. He will burn me. I must go. 
well, we'll, we'll, we'll get out of here. Why don't we then. We'll let's walk and talk? Come with me. Okay. Neb is gonna like. She'll start to her. walk. She's walking fast. She's turning around behind her. She's looking for places to hide as she walks with you. Yeah, and I'll like weave through the, okay. the trees to try to put some distance and some some things that block our sight. But yes. as we're walking, be like, okay, while we're walking, because we don't have a lot of time, we yes. think we're running into the, the the person who's in charge of the the air domain. Oh, Do you know anything about Flores. them? Flores, he is quite, quite strong. Be careful with Flores. I mean, it seems like all of all of them are strong. Is, Why is aren't you strong? It's the voice of Robin, who's turned around, hands yeah. on her hips. <laughs> Why aren't you strong? Um, uh, she looks, she says, uh, she says, because I left a mistake I should not have made. Did you, you, you lost your strength? Time. Does Silas hear any of this? Where he is? Uh, it depends, Silas. Are you tracking them? You want to um, yeah, I mean, I'm listening while I'm sitting here. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're pretty sure. far away. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, we're, I mean, we're power walking. We're, yeah, she's yeah, like, and she's, right constantly, right and she's right. constantly Well, if, if they have all left then, yes. uh, I'm not waiting on smoke. I'm going to okay. start floating <laughs> the mirror up, and I'm going to go okay. up to about, you know, 120 feet in the air. You got it. And uh, and I'm just going to float that uh, mirror 60 feet away from me, though. You got like, it. As far away as I can. You got it. Okay, so yeah, it's you You and the mirror are off. All you're hearing is of wind as you're up there, you know, with your hand holding the spear 60 feet away, keeping your eye trained on it, one lighted, one not, uh, <laughs> just trying to keep an eye on what happens here, just waiting for this minute to be over. Maeve, you are hidden very, very well, just tracking Ivy and Neb and Robin and Feruza as they sort of walk through the trees. Um, <clears throat> all right, so Neb has asked, she says, Flores has and then Robin from behind says, why? She says, because I left, I never should have, it was a mistake. Why? Why was it a mistake? Because now I am no longer who I was. You did oh, it for love. But she can't, can't go me. back? You can't go back? You can't get Perhaps I can. I hope, I hope if you will release me that I can and I will become the ruler that I was meant to be. Take care of my people. So that's the ultimate goal, is release you and go back. Yes. What, what happened? I want this war to be over. I want this to be done war is there like active war going on or between is the this... rulers oh that's right for the strength for the person to rule all yes but there's there's a complete dominion over all of the worlds mm -hmm. so you're here and tolerance here and we think uh florence is here and there's Florence. like a chance that zola is here all the rulers are here yes in the veil trying to find their way into erte i was able to do it but i know now that was wrong well then just oh. tell them so they don't do what you mm -hmm. did. They will not listen to me. They want me dead. <laughs> but you so can let can... them go, because then they'll lose their power, and then you'll win. <laughs> or, or they will make the wrong decisions, and they will choose dominion over all of the worlds. Erte, the Veil, and all four Everything. of the world. This would not be a good thing. You must trust me. I was in Erte, and I did not take that final step. All I want is for things to go back to the way they were. Where did you end up in Erte? And how long were you there? She says, time so long ago. Uh, she tries to think about it as suddenly all of you just feel a little shake in the world as she stops dead in her tracks. Silas, looking up, holding it where it is, where it is in the air. I mean, you flew to, so it's 180 feet in the air. Okay, great. Uh, smoke, black smoke, begins to billow out of the back of it. You can see little <sighs> sparks of fire and light within that smoke. Um, as this sort of smoke creature begins to wend itself around, almost as if it is looking, every once in a while you think this smoke begins to sort of create sort of a horned presence, but it appears to be able to fly within this particular form. Um, but it is, if you could tell a, a smoke creature's uh, Silas knows a lot it's about confused. a smoke monster. Of course. Like, um, yeah, he he's, watched he's watched all watched six a, seasons. Or yeah, one right? particular Stuck smoke with it monster. to the bitter, bitter end. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> it seems confused. It does seem like it is trying to figure out where it is, why it's here. Um, in fact, oh, hell yeah. Uh, after a brief couple of seconds of that, it locks 
focus on you and oh. begins to wend its way through the sky in your direction. All right, like I'm going to gonna lead it on a merry chase. Okay. <laughs> I, I am actually flying a, as fast as I can and I am not going to um, I'm not going to go the same direction that I saw them going previously. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but I am staying trailing... I'm staying high though. <laughs> staying high. Are you trailing the mirror with you kind of maintaining uh, your yes, hold on it? Yes, yes, okay. I'm going to maintain my hold on it. Yes. Rather than drop it. Yes. Um, how fast can you fly? I can fly. Um, if I need to, yes. I can go 60. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but, but I, but I, uh, typically would be 30. So I'm certainly, um, looking like, so I don't have to mm -hmm. face forward. So I'm actually mm -hmm. flying like Peter Pan, like backwards, gotcha. like looking, <laughs> um, and I'm glancing over my shoulder occasionally to make sure that I'm not hitting a, a tree, gotcha. but, um, but I'm keeping my eyes locked on it. And, um, I am going to, uh, if it starts getting close to me, yes. then I will start taking bonus actions to go faster. Simply <laughs> start to take those bonus actions because boy, does it rocket up on you. Okay. However, once you start taking those bonus actions, you are able to keep just an arm's length out of its out of its distance as you begin to try to serpentine and try to confuse it and go up and down and darting around just trying to stay out of as i'm doing this i'm yeah. just saying i'm just saying hey listen i don't know if you can understand me or not but listen th th this is is pointless i don't think you're going to catch me this time you're going to get sucked back in the mirror we're trying to help you seriously we're just trying to help you i i'll help you find ivy if that's what you really want um we just want to know what the hell is going on in this place well, can you help us Okay, I don't understand you. Like, you know, can, can you understand me? Can you do this if you understand me? <laughs> it does not do that. It does not, unless you want to make a persuasion roll. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, at, at some point, uh, as as we're doing yes. this, then I am going to. I assume he's close enough uh, within thirty feet um, as we're doing this. I am uh, not with my bonus action because I am using it. Oh yes, um, you are. But but I am uh, going to uh, make sure that I use detect thoughts and try to detect okay. uh, again, surface thoughts at first. I just want to see, is this like ki kill, kill this, uh, you know, irritating pixie dust guy, or, you know, does he have something else on his mind? Fantastic. Uh, we'll come right back to that. Let's go back okay. down. Uh, Ivy upon hearing that voice up in the sky and the rest of you have heard it as well. It is booming. Um, Robin, your understanding of it is that it is again asking for her, um, <clears throat> uh, asking also for him. Um, where is he? Where is she? Tell me where. Uh, a lot of, you know, threat or else um, <clears throat> there is some, you know, kill this annoyance uh, thing mm -hmm. in there as well that you're getting. Uh, Ivy immediately sort of drops to her knees um, almost as if she's trying to hide, but you know, she, she glows like a, you know, like a ghost, like something, you know, kind of has that, it's very difficult for her to kind of hide. Um, luckily there is this tree cover that seems to be doing that for her. So you have a couple of more seconds with her. If there's anything else you'd like to do. Um, seeing Robin, if you, are you reacting to hearing Tolerant at all? Uh, I think she's trying to, she would be trying to keep, like she's listening, but keeping mm -hmm. it calm. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's okay. To relay it. And Feruza and Maeve, you as well. Yeah. I mean, you want to jump in. she's. I mean, Feruza's watching, keeping her eye on Silas. But I mean, she's like Silas is moving too fast. Yeah. Like if she had to throw something. They're also are, just dark against a dark yeah. sky. You know, yeah. at a certain point, it's just like stars are blinking in and out of existence, trying to follow the darkness of Silas and the dark smoke yeah. in the sky. I mean, yeah. almost impossible. So yes, I haven't really had many opportunities to see Ivy from yes. the other side. I'm wondering if, if from being able to now see sort of Ivy in, in three dimensions, there are things that I am picking up on that I have not been able to notice about mm. her before. Investigation that might check. might be telling. Yeah, investigation check, please. Investigation. investigation. Does she have gills? <laughs> Wait. <coughs> Is Ivy, she's ghostly. She's not solid, right? She's ghostly. She's not solid. At, at this point, she looks pretty solid. Interesting. Okay. 21. A 21. <clears throat> okay. Her, her clothing is very authentic. 
as you're looking at it now, it looks v very expensive. Um, uh, like the kind of thing you'd see in a museum. This does not look like a costume piece. It looks, you know, really good. Um, <clears throat> she does appear to be three-dimensional. She, you can't see through her. She's not transparent. Um, I don't know if there's anything specifically having to do with her back. Um, I also, because I saw her around the side as well. Yes. Um, jewelry, rings, yeah. um, anything that would, uh, footprints, anything like that, shoes, yep. just anything I might not have noticed when we were only seeing her. Sure. Her. So she is, she has quite a bit of jewelry on. She's got teardrop earrings. She's got quite an elaborate sort of droopy diamond necklace and lots of different little pieces. She's got rings on her fingers, um, <clears throat> a very wedding delicate, ring? a wedding ring. No. Not an actual wedding ring, nothing on that left hand, no actual wedding band. Um, uh, but lots of other rings, uh, mostly with stones on them. Um, <clears throat> lots of sort of clear white gemstones. Um, um, she is leaving footprints as she walks through the snow. That is something you're definitely noticing that you did not notice on the train before. <coughs> All right. Anything else, my friends? She seems to have a dominant hand. I know that's Ooh, a weird a dominant question. hand. <laughs> she's not I doing not anything at the moment. I know, she's not doing the moment that would kind of lead you to believe that one way or another. Um, if you'd like to try to attempt to get her to, I'll give you like ten seconds. I'll give her. The, I'll give it that she's trying to hide too. Mm -hmm. That she mm -hmm. might maybe, but yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it a shot to try okay. and throw something Dude. her way that might yeah. throw something out if she catches it. Um, hey, Ivy, heads up. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, what would you want for that? A sleight of hand? A, a, yeah. I mean, we'll do, uh, we'll go. I mean, you just have to do it. I mean, I don't know. Oh, if you I just, okay. you're just going to throw something at her like a stick? Yeah. Just, okay, great. <laughs> Enough to get her to find her. <laughs> Maeve jumps out of hiding and throws a stick <laughs> at Ivy. <laughs> um, fantastic. <laughs> Let me see what her reaction does. Oh, uh, I rolled a one. So oh, I can't boy. tell if that means that Ivy fails or if I just give you the best result out of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to give you the best result. Um, she reaches up and grabs it with her right hand. Okay. Um, oh, and I'll offer, you do see a ring on her right hand on that fourth finger. Um... Uh, okay, at that point, against her will, her feet dragging in the ground, she begins to get pulled up off I would like to the ground to and grab into her. the air. <gasps> you reach out and try to grab? Okay, yeah. uh, are you going to try to hold her down? Uh, yeah. Strength okay. check? I mean, she's right there so you can grab her. Give me a strength check. Sure. I'm going to grab onto Neb. Okay. Can I help? Yeah. Can we okay. help? Like, if we see what are me? all of your strength slash athletics <laughs> oh, bonuses? No. It's yeah. not gonna help. Negative yeah. one. Yeah. Negative one. Like one of those Christmas decorations where the yeah, picture. Yeah. I'm thinking like oh, oh oh negative one. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, wait. And what do you what did you get, Neb? The a seven. That's a seven. For That's accurate. Are we doing well, athletics your, or strength? Your athletics bonus. Okay. Just to, just with it's a plus six. Yeah. So we're at thirteen. <clears throat> Yeah. Possibly 12, thanks to Robin. <laughs> um, fantastic. You grab onto her immediately, Neb. You are pulled off your feet. Like like the like a little boy with a balloon. You are just like being pulled up into the sky. Robin grabs onto you and loses her footing too, <laughs> beginning to come up. Feruza grabs the two of you. And you can Feruza feel that you are also beginning to be pulled up off your feet as oh, she is good. sucked into the air at gathering speed faster and faster. Let go, um, Neb. Is there anything else that you could tell us? Serious. She looks down at you as she is being pulled <laughs> upward, and you're keeping your eyes locked on hers. And she simply looks at you and says, <clears throat> "Release me, or the fate of more than just yourselves." What's a better way to say this? Uh, it, it is more than just your fates at stake. 
you let go? There, there'll be like a beat. <laughs> yes. And then I'll let go, yeah. As you let go, falling back to the earth, fall, <laughs> Robin through to everyone. And we're going to take a little bit of damage on this unless you have a reaction because yeah. she was getting sucked up there pretty fast. Um, mm -hmm. <coughs> as she disappears into the sky, Silas, <clears throat> your detect will come back to you guys as you're falling down. Silas, your detect thoughts, uh, surface thoughts do seem to be everything that I go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, like, I, you know, I don't know how many rounds this is happening, yes. in, but. Ultimately, uh, within this, Silas, when it becomes very clear after that initial sensing, mm -hmm. he starts talking, Silas can't understand. Silas is going to, uh, he's going to maintain concentration on detect yes. thoughts, but uh, with his normal action, he is going to start using minor illusion to literally like put pieces like out in front of him. So like as Tauron should be able to see it very clearly. Okay. Um, essentially what looks like parchment unfolding and uh, almost like hieroglyphs that okay. are, um, you know, a fox uh, cowled person with a flowing cape um, looking majestic, super majestic, um, but then shaking hands with uh, a depiction of Tall Run. Okay. And, uh, and then he's the, the hieroglyphs are going to start moving uh, with additional, you know, castings of this over a few seconds here that okay. is going to be... Um, that is basically going to show um, like symbols and they just happen to look like Avatar, the last airbender symbols. Cause that's just what he thinks of when he thinks elements, but he's like got symbols that like throw up on the hieroglyphs. Uh, and then he shows the Fox cowled uh, superhero, like, uh, you know, grabbing them all and handing them to, uh, to, to Talron. Um, and I just want to see what his reaction and what his thoughts are when I do that. So previous to this, the thoughts had been what, what Robin had heard. Where is he? Where is she? I have to find them. Why are you in my way? Da, da, da. I will swat you like a bug, things like that. <clears throat> As you put this up in front of him, um, <laughs> this little slideshow, shadow play, um, <clears throat> it does sort of come to a stop and watch it. Uh, as it kind of keeps you, you know, darting within its 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 sights a little bit there. Um, <clears throat> and then at the end of it, uh, yes. Silas is going to make sure that uh, Talrun and a uh, little depiction of Silas high five. Because <laughs> that's <laughs> universal. Uh, yeah, everybody <laughs> knows what that means. Um, it stops. Um, your I'm going detect to thoughts. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead. detect thoughts. Yeah. Yes, your detect thoughts. Yeah. Um, if I if I'm going deeper here, uh, does get a wisdom save. Does if you're going to go deeper, but I'm I'm going to give you detect thoughts almost as if it's like a translation Got it. Um, of of words. Um, uh, if you want to go deeper, let me know, and we'll make the wisdom save. Yeah, no, as long as I can understand what okay. what his sentiment is, I'm I'm fine. The here. sentiment of this is, he's curious about you now. Um, <clears throat> if I have to, if I get the glimmer of that, yes, and I mean, and and feels as though he is questioning you. Got it. Perfect. So if there is any time at all left here to do one more hieroglyph yep, slide, mm -hmm. then uh, then the idea is there is a hieroglyphic uh, rough shape of a mirror shard. Yes. There's a mirror. Yes. And then the, the hole there. And yes. then I'm moving the mirror to it. Yes. And then I'm uh, uh, animating Talrun bursting out like jazz hands almost. Um, jazz and, Yeah, that's it. As you are focused on doing that, you don't feel malice necessarily, like aggression. I mean, that's constant, uh, but you don't feel any like surge of that. However, it does move forward and closes that five, 10 foot gap that there was between you, bursting through that illusion, dispersing it to the side, and this enormous bull face that is probably five times your own head. Oh, wow. Stop. If I'd known he was that big, I wouldn't have done it. No, I'm just oh, joking. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, stops in front of you, and you would swear to God that it smiles. At which point... He, him, too? He, he smiles. He's starting back. to be sucked? He begins to be sucked back towards the mirror as you look over and you see Ivy... 
Okay, so as I, I, as Ivy yeah. is doing that, like if I see him start to get sucked yeah. off, then I'm going to basically like take the mirror and mm -hmm. um and like I'm trying to peg it and and I'm like going to put the right. mirror under Ivy where hopefully she can just go into it like a basketball hoop, mm -hmm. like as easy and gentle as possible. <laughs> and then right. uh, and, and then I am going to continue at that point. I don't I, I think that he's getting you know yes. sucked off really fast, mm -hmm. but like I'm going to continue to fly. Uh -huh. And um and as I'm flying, like I'm going to try to fly as fast as I can and move the mirror to see how long mm -hmm. he uh, how long it takes him to get sucked into the mirror. Um, I see. Okay. So you're going to try to like pick up Ivy. Make and, it gentle for Ivy. Right. But then. And then like try to uh, see how thing. long I can prolong <laughs> okay. his sucking. Yeah. Uh, you don't prolong it for very long. The, the, the suckage is, is faster than he can move faster than you can move. Um, so, you know, you, you prolong it a little bit, but he's getting pulled really fast. But as you do, you get this, surface thought feeling of confidence and one last sound emanates yeah. Robin you hear this right before he just gets sucked back up into that mirror and all sound stops and you and Silas gets the feeling of him saying do The mirror floats six feet away from you, Silas. All right, then I'm going to. Um, oh, okay. gonna... we have falling friends here. Quick oh. question. <laughs> yes. Quick question, and it might not be something Neb has seen. Yes. When the two of them were pulled back into the mirror, yes, she she gets pulled in mirror side. Does he get pulled in on the back side, or does he also go in the mirror? Silas saw him get pulled in through the back. Okay, so they're definitely two different. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cold side and hot side. <clears throat> I just want to get confirmation of that. You got before. it. Yes, Silas um, can confirm that. Those of you who are looking up while this is happening can confirm that this yes. happens. Again, it's hard to see off there, but she glows a little bit. <coughs> and the mirror obviously reflects some more. Uh, but yes, the three of you who are falling. Um, <clears throat> uh, Do I happen to see that, them? No, this was below the tree line here. I'm going to say, is there anything the three of you want to do as a reaction to this fall? Um, Screen you can do. I mean, do, do we hear, do we know that, yeah, do we know that Neb is going to release when she releases? I don't think we will. No. Free fall. <laughs> I mean, you're all, I mean, you're all like, let her yeah. go, you know. So like a chain, hoping. yeah. yeah but I, you're, I, I mean, you're 30 feet up probably at this point. And they probably wow, would have yeah. heard her say the thing about, you know, let me yes. go. So I think you'd probably have a, a second. <laughs> yeah, you you have a reaction. You can take a, you can use a reaction in this moment yeah, as you are good. falling. Uh, branches hitting you on either side as you plummet down the earth, the snow below mm -hmm. you coming up quickly. Maeve as well. You can see this happening. <laughs> Silas is the only one who can't. I think we're just stuck. Do do we have? Like I don't a... really have anything I can do. Okay. Yeah. Is this is this? We That's like... what you get for becoming a human kite. Uh, <laughs> is this like we have an action? No, you have a reaction. A re okay. I you have, have no reactions. You have no reactions. No. Uh, My no reaction reactions. is to scream. Then if I if I had All something right. else, I might try something else. But nope. <laughs> mm. That's not I got, so I got, bad. I got nothing. All right. That's no. not so bad. Um, the branches hurt. Uh, and they give you some scratches, but they also kind of break your fall, and you only yeah. take eight bludgeoning damage as the three oh. of you land on the uh. snowy, slightly cushioned, but also very icy ground beneath you. Uh, so just eight damage each. Uh. You, oh, got mm. it. Oh. Sprain some ankles, get some more bruises. <laughs> My cock's <No>. are... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, I didn't ask you to, to jump on. Did you... But thank you for jumping on. I appreciate it. I was I was hoping I figured we try. We're just trying everything, right? Yeah. Try not to die. Silas is floating down like Silas. whatever he can. Goes down. Are you bringing oh, the mirror yeah. with you? Yes. Okay. Uh Silas alights uh near you as he kind of finds his way down. Uh you all pick yourselves up. What happened? Uh they became human kites. 
Well, but before that, we did get some information. So the, the ruler of air, his name is Florence. 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 Just, just for notes, happening. clarity, how's it spelled? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, F L U R R I S. Florence. Oh, Flores. like flurry. Oh, okay. that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm still a little rattled from the fall. Uh, Florence. <laughs> I mean, um, he was Florence, totally getting called Flo if it was Florence. Yeah, Florence. <laughs> It wasn't. We had we had the oh, giant guy named God. Steve. You know, I'm probably Florence. still calling. Well, you him named him like... Steve. <laughs> That's true. You so, know, um, yeah, he's he's apparently, according to Ivy, very strong. Um, they're all here, or at least she thinks they're all here. They're mm -hmm. all at war with each other. Um, she wants to go back. She said that the reason she doesn't have any power is because she spent too long in Erte. And she lost everything. And then when she decided to, to, in her words, do the right thing and go back, mm -hmm. that's when she got trapped. So, so her flipping hope... her fins, she don't get too far. Legs are required for jumping, dancing, strolling Not along. True. Not true. You can dance in a chair. Thank you very much. There you that go. is very true. <laughs> that is very, Yay. very true. Also, You're this right. whole time I've just had the last unicorn going through my head between the bull and the glowing yeah. and everything. So I'm in a very different, very One different story. One of my story. favorite movies, if you hadn't Such figured that out already. Movies. Such a good movie. But she is, so that does mean, though, that she um, she did get Little Mermaided, kind of, yeah. in some way. She, did, did she feel like she can get her groove back, Stella style, or what? Well, she said that's what she wants. Did she, she feel know. confident that? Oh, she doesn't know. That's she didn't great. know. She oh, said she's she hard. Yeah. Well, she Sil said sarcastic. Silas, what were you doing? Because I <laughs> heard. <laughs> yeah. What were you Explain doing? Explain yourself. You know, I, I, I tried. I tried to tell you that if it went bad, I was going to lead him on a merry chase, and a merry chase we had. Why would so, he say do it though? Do it, yes, yes. So let me let me lay this out. Did you tell him you were a cappella? No, 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 no. Like I should have. I don't think of that next time. Um, but uh, but no. And so then Silas recounts what he did, uh, but like three PO style, mm -hmm. like with sound effects, mm. um, and all of all of these things. And he is recreating the hieroglyphs, the Very animated cool. hieroglyphs, and saying saying like, so I was flying like this, and and <laughs> and you see uh, Silas just kind of float off the ground and like look look like that, and he like kind of makes a little billowing. Uh, breeze kind of like what what he looked like you know and everything and he's like but then he was chasing me and i got this sense that he probably could have caught me if he really really wanted to uh but uh but then i started uh you know uh started acting like i was going to be his friend because i just wanted to see if he would stop being so angry because i was detecting his thoughts and all i sensed was uh, where are where where is he where is she that kind of thing and so that's that got me to uh believe in that um you know talrun like we suspected is not just after ivy i think he's after Flo and zo too like i i, I or, think that like all of them yeah and or julian the possibly julian too trapped yes. him in the mirror he wants everybody he wants uh, everybody he wants yeah. the world to burn and so I acted like I wanted the world to burn with him. But just where everybody is aware, um, I don't actually want the world to burn. I was trying <laughs> to trick uh, the smoke Did, monster. And, were you successful um, I, in tricking him? I think pilots? so, because then, Robin, we finally come to the climax here of what he said, do it. And I like really almost wanted him to say just do it. And in my mind, I kind of translated oh. it that way because, you know, and then Silas like does a little hieroglyph of a swoosh. Um, <laughs> uh, and he's like, because, but, but um, with that, like he, I showed him this. And then I showed him the last hieroglyph with the mirror shark going into the mirror. And he understood that. And he smiled at me. Okay. This guy's like huge. All right. But he smiled at me and he said, do it as he was getting sucked off. So that confirms when we put that final shard in, both of them are going to get released. Yes. And then I think we, that that is all the confirmation that we need. And then we're going to have to deal with both of them. And 
Ivy doesn't seem to have any powers and no one seems to know how to get back to where they came from and we still need to find the the air and the earth people. So I don't know if that helps, but at least we've got a little more information now than we did before. So I am saying in, I will say that I was you could possibly made <laughs> Well yeah, yeah like at least a pretend friend. Let, oh. Listen, at this point, a pretend friend is better than being chased. So that's good. So Yeah, I mean, least... he might stop and talk to me the next time that we come to this at 2.13. He this might. I'm thinking. Before we get the last shard, do you, are we saying that we should find the other ruler so that when, when the old guy comes out, that we have people to back us up? And they can do they can duel it out amongst themselves. Potentially, uh, I I think we still have to try to find. I have no idea how to find these other two rulers. So until we've got a line on them, we probably just need to continue to look for the shard. I have this gut feeling if we find the shard, the other two rulers are going to show Sorry. up. Hmm. What is the next stop on this on this? Well, no longer train. Uh, it's back. This this was the last so one. If we had stayed on the train after this, it would be back all the way around to the station. Back to Gravelhurst. Uh, so now it's just a searching then, I guess. Yeah, but we can still keep it a train and then uh, Silas, you hear the, uh, like the little faint noise of the choo-choo, do-do-do-do-do, and then like the music starts and he just starts flying and doing this number. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, everybody. Who gave him flight, come by the way? The train <laughs> and ride it. That's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> did uh I'm trying to think did i forget anything else there was a uh, froza um, um hope uh, robin do you remember no. anything else that, that it was a very frantic conversation and i kept trying to like direct <laughs> ivy back to talking because you know i mean i guess i understand the threw whole, a stick at her I, yeah mm -hmm. and then a, someone threw a I stick did. at her i didn't know um, where that which, come from you which threw a stick can at I take her? out we have yeah. a journal, right, from yeah. Ivy's room. Can I take a look at that? Yeah, absolutely. I'll look at the handwriting. Yeah. Is uh, it from a, a right-handed person or a left-handed person? Do you do you have experience with that? I will. I will offer this. Mm -hmm. I have skill in forgery. Okay. Oh, I think that's very helpful. Absolutely. So I would. I would make a case Advantaged. that yes, I do. Investigation check, please. Well, it sounds like Adam's about to learn something. Is there a difference in the way the right-handed and left-handed people write? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. Why? Left-handed people have to do very specific things hand. to avoid yeah, getting the ink to smudge. Ink on the, oh, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Especially with old pens like that where mm -hmm. smudging. Where the ink would stay wet for way longer. Yeah. 20 years. sucks. Be left-handed. This looks like a right-handed writer to you. Okay. But she caught the stick with her left. Oh, no, wait, she caught the stick with her right. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. we, we established her dominant hand as the right hand. I'm sorry. This looks like a left-handed writer to you. Okay. You catch the telltale drag mm -hmm. of a left-handed oh, writer. Oh, interesting. Sorry, I'm forgetting my own uh, <laughs> things that I did 10 minutes ago. Okay. My um, nose is stuffy, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. which means my brain is stuffy. So, yes, yeah, so she, she caught the stick with her right hand, which had a ring on the ring finger. Um, mm -hmm. but this is a left-handed writer. <clears throat> okay. So I have a thought. Yes. This Whoa. is cool. Oh, this is so cool, Deb. Um, yeah. <laughs> the ivy we're mating is a reflection of herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed, but she had her, her wedding ring on the wrong hand. And she used the wrong hand to catch a stick. And this journal is written in the opposite hand. Why, why, did, why did she use the wrong hand to catch a stick? What, well, what if she were right-handed... Uh, or if she were left-handed. Mm. So this journal is written by a left-handed person. Yeah. And the ivy we saw is right-handed. I mean, I don't know if somebody threw something at me. I would catch it with my left hand and I'm right-handed, but that's because I played you, baseball. I think it's very oh. clever. Well, very well clever. Let's, let's continue. Let's let's assume she's not ambidextrous. I, I'm not saying she yeah, plays not, baseball. But, but I'm also not saying that she played baseball. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just, I'm just saying, like, you know, that that could be it. But I, I think the rest of that definitely sounds compelling. It just seems strange that you would not wear her wedding ring on the correct hand. Do we know oh, they were married? They they did get married, right? We did her? 
I mean, that was that was what was told across the world. Okay. okay. So, I couldn't remember if they were lovers or if they, you know, actually tied them up. Young so. Very yeah. cool. So if they're if she's a <coughs> reflection of who she was, are we thinking of that just physical or are we also thinking of that psychologically, mentally? Is she a different person because of who she was when she was pulled into the mirror? And is Tal run the same thing even though he's getting sucked in the opposite end of the mirror? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's rough getting sucked on the opposite end. <laughs> getting bad. Listen, getting listen, bad, Silas. Dude, there was a lot of things coming. There were a lot of things you were saying, and I was, you know, <laughs> I was trying to let me go. I'm trying to think of a different. Like they got vacuumed up. They got. I'm like, trying to they think. They pulled. They were pulled. Pulled, pulled there you into go. the mirror. Okay, there, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there so, was this great yeah, show yeah. called Ghosts that talked about yeah. people getting sucked yeah. all the time. And is there? It's true. <laughs> we lost him. Oh, what just happened? Too, of too dirty for a Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> the FCC has turned turned Adam off. That's nope. amazing. Oh boy. So so uh, um, I've lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, you, you were saying that that's all we learned from. Uh, we were saying from that little... whether whether it was just a physical thing or a psychological mm, yeah and if it, is that worrisome or a good thing i think it's just added oh, i think it would depend on who you were on the other side <laughs> wouldn't it well and that's why i'm asking if it's worrisome or a good thing if i mean if if tolerant is nothing but anger and hate and being literally and figuratively bullheaded and then he comes out of the mirror are we expecting someone on the other side calm? he's just an enormous hug well or at least calm and um able to keep control of their emotions you know listen if, if, she, if i learned anything from the concept of four elements living in balance with one another is that just all the fire people are not bad necessarily fire can be passion it can be um, you know, the proper use of aggression, you know, it can, can, can be a lot a case of things. For right? something, which mm -hmm. is, Talrand isn't going through a reflection. Talrand is going through the wood, so it's not reflecting the same way that Ivy is. So? Could it be that the mirror is supposed to go the other way around? Or that Julian was trying to tap, trap Talrun, and that's what actually went wrong, was he Could got... Be. He, he was able to get Talrun in, in on the the back side of the mirror, but then and that Talrun is not... a reflection of himself, but Ivy is. But how Which do you know that Talrun's not a reflection? I, of I don't. I we're just we're just putting out theories right now. Because... Yeah. What if we could turn the mirror around in the frame? Like, do we think that would have any effect? What if Tall Run? Well, no, that could be terrible. What if Tall Run like went into the wrong place, like went into the water world or something? Well, I mean, that I would think... be like those aliens and signs coming to a world made seventy percent of their like horrible, horrible weakness, right? I'm Sounds gonna like a setup for a movie. I'm gonna guess that he's trapped the same way Ivy is just from the fact that when he thinks uh silas that you're going to let him out he said do it if he was yeah. if he well, was he also in... got sucked off just like her well like, yeah but if, completely... if either of them were in a place like we were concerned that they were actually in one of the other worlds if i'm they not were actually... saying that he's not trapped that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying in terms of being being a reflection of yourself he's not in a reflected world, whereas Ivy is. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what that means for us. That's what you mean, basically. Yeah. Fresh. Okay. It does mean we may need to... There may be something that we need to reflect backwards or something. I, I don't know. Well, I'm sure it's, it's going to be some kind of wonderful puzzle that we have to somehow <laughs> piece together. Robin, as they're all talking and, and this interesting, exciting realization that Maeve has had, there's just that warm, comforting feeling of <laughs> that necklace being in your backpack. Just loving that it's there. Just happy that you have it and 
the others don't. <laughs> oh boy. What are you laughing at, Miss Robin? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> Yet. That's right, you went for a little walk. Where did where did you go? Just to collect my thoughts. I had a lovely time. Well, we did too. Thank you, Silas. But... I don't know. I'm so tired. I don't know where else to go with any of this. I really... I feel like we need to find the other two rulers in some way. Yes, and the shard. When, yeah, when, I think... Like I said, I think when we find the shard, they're going to show up, but I'd, I'd prefer to... Why, why, why do you think that? Well, if the... You think they can sense it? Yeah, why not? Because if they could sense it, why don't they just go get it? Uh, for the same reason they haven't gone and gotten it before we showed up. Magic. We're the key. <laughs> We're the key to the... To yeah, your names. names are all over this stuff. Wait, so how how are we planning to find this last shard? I don't know, and I don't know how we're planning to find the, the other two rulers, but we need because to figure that all out. I do have an idea. Did I you? like ideas. <laughs> because it's that shard is kind of like a treasure. Oh, boy. Ooh. And we need to find it. So... I mean, Silas. this is like video game Silas. choices going on Ooh, right now. It's Silas. Warm on your Silas, you've seen Lord of the Rings. Oh, you I know have, how absolutely. That but that took like centuries for him to turn into a little wretched creature. <laughs> Robin? Mm-hmm. So you're talking about using the necklace to find it. I mean, what if we all take turns using it where it can't? you know, uh, make its influence because, like, if one person you think, doesn't... You, you think people are going to give up the ring? <laughs> well, well, no, that's what I'm saying, though. There are, like, four other of us, and we can just take it. I'm saying oh. if we all consent right now ahead of time, <laughs> that, like, hey, listen, when my time is up with this thing, y'all take it from me. Um, I'm going to say two things before I want to say one more thing to Miss Robin. One, everyone's going to be able to take it from me. Two, okay. no one's taking it from Feruza. <laughs> and then I'm gonna like walk well, next. That's right. I oh, I can throw down with Frozen. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna walk up to Robin and I'm gonna say, I don't think that's a good idea. But if you want to do that, I'll support you in it. But I, I'm worried. Just looking at options. Just options. I mean, we need to figure out where to find this shard. Does anyone have ideas where to start? Well, okay, Go back hey, in time got... and tell past me not to pick up the necklace. <laughs> we we we've got but hey we've got like a map right that is like hey um so if we think back to the map that yes. we had yes. um the map says okay hey it's here in this town it at least like narrows down so i know so, this forest is a big no, place but where did no, that say on the map no so, it just gave us the map that. is just farnshall wilds is just a vast forest on the side um the map there was no x marks the spot on the there map there was no x marks i mean i never spot. looked at it closely the but expedition like... that you were going to go on was a hike through the wilderness um so you, you know you don't you don't particularly know what that specific location was there's not even a mark for the station on the in that on that map so you don't know where the train stopped within the farnshall wilds this is a needle in a giant forest. Well, so I, I have some suggestions. If, let's go on the assumption that us losing the train was a whoopsie and whoever set this up thought we'd still have the train. If that's the case, every place that we've stopped at, there have been clues for where to go. And mm -hmm. if we can find the train tracks, we can find where we would have stopped to then go on the, the hike. Let's find the train tracks. Let's find where we were. It shouldn't take me too long so to find the tracks. We we knew that the direction we were headed was toward the station, correct? Yes. You know so, you know the direction on the track that you were going. Yeah. Um, and that's somewhere between Bellcastle Cap and Gravelhurst Station is the Farnshall Wilds. You were going to take the train through it. And at some point along that ride, there must have been a station where you would stop and go on this nature hike. <clears throat> And, it's, and learn survival, you know, uh, yeah. uh, skills was part of the expedition. And it's got to be a place where there would have been set up to pick up wood and water. So it's not going to be just like 
a little tiny thing. We should be able to find it. So yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I like honestly, though, I should be able to like to go as the crow flies and at least peg a direction that we could head in that would would have that. I understand the trees are tall here, but mm -hmm. it, it's gonna be it's gonna be easier than us trudging through this terrain like all of us at one time. And I can try to report yeah. back. Or we try and ask the fairies of the forest. <laughs> what? What? Uh, Why should the fairies of the forest? <laughs> no, but there are things you do. What so do you, you do? you make sure they're not angry at you. You leave out whiskey and you leave out bread and you leave out milk. <laughs> whatever you have. We need what? that stuff. I mean, Why I could leave out so whiskey. <laughs> you need, what you need more is for the fairies not to be mad at you. Well, I can leave out berries. As Just they're talking, berries. another ten minutes has passed. Robin, I'd like to make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Why did I... Oh, why did I do that? Oh, God. Just a wisdom. Oh, I get a plus five, so that's a twelve. That's a twelve? Oh, God. <laughs> plus five? Oh, oh no. Uh, Robin, you have an enormous urge to put this thing on. <clears throat> Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Robin is, while people are kind of, you know, doing the, the yeah. end of this conversation, Robin just kind of steps back and uh, her hand in her bag. Yeah. And is just fiddling with it in, her, in the palm of her hand, kind of out of sight from uh -huh. everyone. Mm -hmm. um, what is, what would be, what would be like your passive stealth sleight of hand you know like what's your like 10 plus <laughs> wait what <laughs> like meaning like you know like your passive wisdom is 10 plus your wisdom modifier like what's your what's your dexterity bonus oh uh it's zero <laughs> zero okay so a 10 is about as stealthy as you know a sleight of handy as you can be without intentionally trying to mm -hmm. um so you know anyone who who either has a passive higher than that or wants to particularly look notices that she's fiddling with it. Yeah, we need to get that away from here as quickly <laughs> as possible. <laughs> but isn't but wouldn't that happen to like I mean obsession with wouldn't it happen to anyone who had it in their hand for a long period of time? So what are we yes. saying? We're just gonna burn an asset? No. Yes. Why? Robin? <laughs> Robin Robin? But you've been it, caught holding it. Hey, Robin? Oh, it would look so good on you. What, oh what was the... So you figured out what that necklace actually does. Could you repeat what the curse was again? It just makes you want stuff. <laughs> well, I want to hear it from Robin. <laughs> uh, so what were the words exactly? So, I mean, I, you know, I, yeah. I don't know words it, but uh, yeah, that, that you allows the attuned wearer to survive without food, drink, or air for ever, basically. Um, but it is cursed. The attuned wearer will become obsessed with treasure at all costs, spending every waking moment searching for things shiny or valuable or reflective or magical. Uh, this amulet will also give them a second sense to find these items. Oh. I mean, honestly, that's how I've lived most of my life, finding special things. Like, I've got stuff lining my shelves, things like like from Cracker Jack boxes 50 years ago. I mean, like, is it that bad? Yes. Um. So you're just saying I'm bad. <laughs> no, I'm not that saying hurts, you're bad. Maeve. You do other things with your day. Well, yeah, I mean, like, what's to say, like, just saying that someone's obsessed with something isn't necessarily a bad thing. As your friends are distracted all, once again, Robin. I'm, I've been looking at Robin this whole time. Yeah. Like, I've been made... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look, I'm just saying it doesn't have to be forever. I just think we need it. But do, does it have to be attuned? Is that the word you used? Attuned? Yeah. Fair enough. Do what you like. <laughs> I... <laughs> I slip it on. You slip it on. Oh, it feels glorious. The weight mm. is perfect. It 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 uh, reflects the color of your eyes as you immediately begin to feel just a little itch behind you, as if that's the direction you think you should walk. We and didn't notice. That, 
<laughs> we will say this is the end of today's chapter of Children of Verte. Uh, thank you all so much for being here and playing with me this evening. Josh, for taking care of everything behind the scenes. Everyone at home, thank you so much. We will special see... call out real quick. Special, special call, call out, out for Hope and Deb for soldiering <laughs> through some major sick this week. So, uh, yeah. And it was a very heavy episode for Hope. It so was. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. It, it's okay if you remember none of <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if only this was recorded and available to watch later <laughs> when you're, you're feeling much better, which will happen soon. Yes. Oh, thank you, guys. So thank you to all of you. Thank you especially to Hope. Thank you to everyone at home. And please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night.